Well, before I get into phase product development and why anyone here might care about phases, it occurred to me sitting upstairs that what is a product? Is it an aviation mapping system? Is it a new cutting-edge medical device? Or is it dinner for your in-laws? Maybe it's all of them. So why do I care about phases? Phase development is a way to track and keep things sensible so you don't get distracted. It's not about hampering creativity or anything else. Everyone can use it. In phase zero, it's the research phase. It's all about, hey, I've got this phenomenal idea. Now, what do I do with it? Am I the only one in the world who cares? Or is there a product here? It's about creating your elevator pitch and living it and refining your ideas into a product that can continue along its way into the design path. So here, you're researching specifications. You're looking at your competitors' products, if there are any. Are there needs? What can we do with it? And you, more importantly, you're not designing yet. You want to keep moving. Phase one, it's all about prioritizing your feature set. If you're building a time machine, it's probably best to start with the time machine part. You can figure out the DeLorean later. You want a prototype. And again, it's all about the priorities, starting with what really matters. Why? Because if it's a part that can cost $100,000 to build, you want to focus on that. You don't want to spend all of your time and all of your money and effort figuring out, hey, we got the headlights, we got the tires, we've got everything about it, but we can't make the time machine part work because we did that last. It's a waste of effort, and it doesn't help. Likewise, you don't want to look and say, well, we've got this really cool product, and the packaging, oh man, the cardboard's going to be fantastic. We're going to logo it like this, the colors are here. You want to get to that, but get to it later. Phase one, focus on what matters, and that's getting a functional prototype as quick as you can. Use duct tape. Use the neighbor's kids. Use the engineering firm up the street if you don't have the skills that you need yourself. But just keep on going and focus on what's important. Eventually, you'll build out your full list and have everything you need. An important part in phase one is keeping a punt list. So a punt list is, hey, this feature is really important, but it's really insignificant. Lots of products have it. Maybe it's just the blinking status LED on a new smartphone. You don't have to worry about that for now, because it doesn't affect how the prototype functions and behaves. And now, when you've got that functional bailing wire, duct tape, zip ties, whatever it is, get it out and get it into the hands of your friends, your family, test groups, and listen to them. This is where you need to be supportively critical of yourself and your ideas and your product. You want to challenge your features and your priorities. Hey, I've got this awesome feature. Just like in the writing world, the, the term kill your babies creates a better product. That's not to say that you don't want to say, well, no one else likes this, but so I'm going to give up. It's not about that. It's about really looking at what matters and designing a product for your users. If you're your only user, go to town. But if you're designing something for a broader market appeal, really focus and listen to them. You want to listen to those testers. You want to listen to your investors. And you also want to trust your instincts to know when maybe they're wrong. But do it consciously. Don't put up the blinders and ignore good advice. In phase two, you really want to take this prototype that you've got. Maybe it survived the tests, probably didn't. And you know what? That's OK, because we're going to take everything we've learned from those tests so far, we're going to take that punt list that we've been keeping, and we're going to tear everything back down to the beginning and really start designing the product. Here is where you're going to start to see what the real product will look like. If it's a new smartphone, well, now it's actually going to look maybe and feel like a smartphone. The phase one prototype, it might have been as big as a table. And that's OK, because it's about proving things out. Now we get to refine. We get to add those extra features. And we get to tweak and challenge ourselves using the criticism and comments that we had to really improve and continue to keep going. And again, once we've been refining, we've got a new prototype, test it. Test it, test it, test it. I've sent pieces to Antarctica to get tested just because that's about as cold as you can get. We've put things in the Bahamas to play with sharks to see, 
Hey, how is the wavelength of this new light going to play? Does it affect animals? These are things that could make or break a product, and they're really easy to ignore. In phase three, you really want to focus on we've got this product, we think it's great, we've refined it, we think it's manufacturable and producible. Now we've got to go out and find manufacturers who can build it for us. Are we buying a machining center and setting it up ourselves? Or are we going to do this in our kitchen table? Or are we going to go to a contract manufacturer? Are they down the street, in the state, across the other side of the planet? These are all questions that you have to look at and answer based off of what volumes are you manufacturing for? What are your costs? What are the risks? So many companies get overextended because they either dream too small or they dream too big. If they're dreaming too big, they're going to spend lots and lots of money and lots of effort going and saying, we've got to produce in China because we can save an extra 20 cents per product. You know, that, that's a great 0.5% of a product cost. And maybe it makes a really big difference, but sometimes staying close to home where you can just, hey, we've got a problem, drive up the road and take a look and fix it, that's a whole lot easier than getting on a plane or sending somebody over there. So with that, you want to listen to your manufacturers. Their manufacturing isn't this black box of, hey, here's a bunch of designs, the product's perfect, we've tested it, we've prototyped it, and eight weeks later, all of your parts pop out, 10,000 of them in their nice, pretty packaging, ready for market. It doesn't work like that. Every process is different. Every manufacturer has its own little twist. And at the end of the day, they're people, just like you and I. And this is where you want to start the conversations and work with them. Meet with several different manufacturers. Try to always have two or three that you're talking to and quoting with, because it's not just about the price. Sometimes, maybe these guys are faster. Maybe they have better quality. It doesn't matter. What happens if one burns down? You've got to have a spare to go to. And by working with them, you can reduce your costs and improve other features. And when you've got those pre-production prototypes, guess what we're going to do? We're going to test them. We're, we're going to test a whole bunch of them, because there's nothing worse than sending the product out before it's ready to go and having a recall or apologize or send patches. So what are the benefits of phase development? You've increased productivity, you've reduced your time to market, you've increased your efficiency because you've dealt with things in the natural order, and you've still got a fantastic, if not better, product than you've ever had before if you just designed it in a bubble. Thank you.